Georgia made a late scratch with his starting pitcher tonight. So that's kind of a big news for both of these teams tonight. The first pitch of the ball game is in there for a strike to Corey Collins. And well, Corey's had a great year this year, batting 396, but in league play, batting 429. 19 home runs, excuse me, 12 home runs on the season. 31 RBIs. And Bulldogs have the shift on defensively. They had Kohler guarding the left side on the first pitch and then switch him to the right side and bring the shortstop Mershon back to his usual position. 1-1 one, one. and right there. There you see that shift. Cal Steven went six innings last week at Florida, gave up two runs on three hits, eight strikeouts, and two walks. The one-two, the foul back. Charlie, when you look at Georgia, this is a team that has hit so many home runs this year, 84 home runs as a team. But in league play, they have not struck out a lot. That's the thing that really jumps off the page. You see so many teams taking big swings, but Georgia not striking out. And now the count evens. Two weeks ago at Texas A&M, Steven went six and two third. Cal gave up one run on five hits over in College Station. Two two, and foul back. You look back to that LSU game to open up league play. That was the game he pitched on a Saturday. Stayed and won the Friday game. And that was the night that Nate Dome came out of the ball game late. And then in the Saturday game, Steven gave up five runs on five hits. Gave up three home runs against LSU. Was roughed up a bit. And in that game, as you talked about, Charlie, did not have that slider working. And there's strike three called. Got the fastball on the inside corner at 96, and that's the way this one starts. Beautifully located pitch this time by Steven. Keeps it down. Catches the inside part of the plate. And so called third strike. And one out in the first. Now, the thing about Georgia in league play on Friday nights is they have gotten off to very good offensive starts. Here's Charlie Condon. Shift on the other way this time. Hunter Hines, the Bulldog, the Mississippi State Bulldog first baseman, the only guy on the right side of the infield. You see the 19 home runs for Charlie Condon, who was a freshman of the year last year nationally. He's had a tremendous start to the season this season. 31 of his 52 hits have been extra base hits. He's batting 481, and that's down a good bit over the last week. He's 0 for his last nine in his last two games. Now the start Condon was off to had you pulling out the record book and looking back at Dave Magadan numbers. Was that 1983? 83 where he hit over 500. One and two the count. The pitch from Cal Steven. And a hard hit ball through the left side, and that's a base hit. So Condon rips one through the left side and pulled it through the shift. And a one-out single here in the first inning. Tough to hit through a shift, but when you hit it 113 off the bat, that can happen. Condon just rips that one for the hit. Now, former state player Slate Offord. Well, Slate Offer going to come to the plate. He played a couple years here in Startville. Transfer to Georgia. Starting third baseman for Georgia. And, Charlie, when you look at this lineup and you see Corey Collins, who has hit it so well in the leadoff spot, and then Condon in the two spot, this really becomes a big part of the order for Georgia. Well, and the key for a pitcher, you work so hard, you think all week long about having to face Collins and Condon. Part of the key is to 
maintain your focus once you navigate past those guys. Georgia is not a team that likes to run a lot. Condon just two out of three. And fouled it back and a count one and two. Slate offered the junior from Madison, Alabama. Hitting 331 overall in league play 278. One, two. Breaking ball hit well into center field and ranging back is Hyzak. He's on the track and he'll reach up and make the catch in right center field. And now two outs in the first. Well, Hyzak had a beat on that one the whole way. He was giving the look as if he would make a play on it, but had very little more room to spare. And now Logan Jordan will come to the plate. Georgia against the right-hander, Cal Steven tonight, with one left-handed hitter in the order, Corey Collins, to lead off. And then you've got eight consecutive right-handed hitters. Jordan, who started his career at Campbell, Wes Johnson in his first season as a head coach at Georgia. Hard to go back to that point. One of the things, though, right-handers have hit Steven significantly better this year than have left-handers. Close play at first. Right-handed hitters against Cal Steven hitting 319. Left-handers hitting below 100. And that ball hit well in the center field. And ranging back a step away from the track. High Zach will haul it in, and Cal Steven works around the one-out single to Carly, Charlie Conn. So ready to go here in the bottom of the first inning. Charlie, the thing that Georgia has done a good job of in league play on Friday nights is getting off to good starts offensively. And Cal Steven able to give up just one single in the top of the first inning. And first pitch swinging, Amani Larry skies it high on the infield, and first baseman coming over, and Logan Jordan making the catch, and <laughs> looks out at Jarvis Evans and says, hey, man, what are you doing here? Yeah, Larry trying to be aggressive early in the at-bat, but this shot by Evans that time, got a ball just off the plate. And gets the easy out to start the ball game. Well, Evans started the season pretty much as the Tuesday night starter and then moved into the bullpen for league games. Now, in SEC play, he has really struggled. Here's Mershon. Mershon batting 337. But Evans has only pitched in two games in SEC play, both coming out of the bullpen. And one and two thirds work, five runs on five, hits three strikeouts and no walks. And out of the five hits, Evans has given up two home runs and a double. So three of the five hits he's given up in league play have been extra base hits. And there you see that all speed pitch. It's a tough one for a right handed hitter to hit. That's why he's so effective against right handers. But you go back to last year when Evans got the, actually didn't get the start. He came in after one batter, after Goldstein came out hurt. Went five and a third, had a really good outing against Tennessee, and then pitched well at times. And, Charlie, it's no secret if you've seen State play this year, they have had their difficulties against left-handed pitchers with lesser velocity. And Evans is not an overpowering type pitcher. He works on movement, changing speeds, 
And that's been the kryptonite to this team so far at times this year. Hey, you look at Mississippi State over the years, you see pitching velocity. If everybody wanted to add velocity, but Mississippi State, a team that's pretty well equipped to hit 94, sometimes 89 gives them fits, particularly with a changeup like Evans can throw up there. And grounded left side. Backhand play, no chance to get Mershon there as Branch able to get to it deep in the hole. But David Mershon has the first Bulldog hit in the bottom of the first. And just like Georgia, get a guy on base with one out. Now Mershon just puts one in play, and by the time Branch can get to that one, no chance at the out at first, so Dakota Jordan will get a chance to swing the bat with a man aboard. And Dakota batting 378, 14 home runs, 42 RBIs. So it was a one-out single for Georgia in the top half of the inning and a couple of long fly balls to center. Got Mississippi State out of the inning. It's a one-out single for State here in the bottom half. Well, you see the throw over. Mershon running at first, has 11 stolen bases. He has not been caught stealing. Fernando Gonzalez behind the plate is thrown out only three of 24 base runners. Make it three out of 25. And a stolen base for Mershon. Could almost feel that one coming. And so for Mershon, he's now 12 for 12 in stolen bases. And now runner in scoring position. The pitch was outside. A count now 2 and 0 to Dakota. So hitters count here on 2-0. and oh. Wouldn't be scared to throw that change up right here, though. They fouled it back to count 2-1. and one. Yeah, You know on that 2-0 pitch that DJ's up there just geared up for fastball. Try to bust him in with a fastball. Now the count three and one. Well, stealing Mershon now opens first base. You've got a left-handed hitter due up next in Hunter Hines. And now the count full. Both teams with a hit here in the first. Pass the pitcher, shortstop up with it. Branch toss it across in time for the out. Now two gone in the inning. Mershon moves over to third and leaves it up to Hunter Hines with two outs and the runner at third. Hines batting 305 on the season. Hit his eighth home run of the season in the game on Tuesday. Rashawn will be able to take a big lead from third. All for playing off the line and the shift on for Hines.
Yeah, lifts it in the air and out of play. Hines in league play, second on the team and hitting behind Isaac. Isaac's hit 405 in SEC only games. Hines batting 361, and five of his eight home runs have come in SEC games. Fouled it back, and now the count one and two. Well, nice crowd here on a Friday. Oh, it certainly is. Continuing to come in. State's been away from home the past two weekends. Decent weather, a little bit cool here at the park tonight. The one, two. And the breaking ball stayed high and just away. And now two and two. That's a really good one two pitch. That's one of those gets up in the eyes of the left handed hitter. You want to take a swing at it. Ground ball, backhand play by Murillo, throws it to first, and a nice pick by Jordan, the first baseman, and that will end the inning. So the shift was on tomorrow afternoon before game two of this series. Here's Trey Phelps, the right fielder. Of course, Ron Polk has spent two years as a head coach at Georgia. Won the league. Went Won to the College World Series at Georgia. 2000, 2001. There's a hot shot. Nice pick by Mershon. Tosses it across in time of the out. Phelps hit it well. That's a do or die play for Mershon. Able to pick it out at short. Glove side and made it look easy, but that ain't. No, that's no fun. Takes it right off the hop, makes a nice throw to first. And Colby Branch will come to the plate. Ron Polk, of course, coached here. 75 and then retired after the 97 season. Spent a couple of years away from the game and then went to Georgia 2000-2001. Went to the College World Series and then came back to Startville 2002 and then fully retired after the 07 season. Ron Polk. Or 08 season. Actually taking three different teams to the College World Series. He took Georgia Southern there. Count one and one. Actually spent some time before the game talking to Jeff Dantzler, our good friend, the voice of the Georgia Bulldogs, David Johnson, those guys down in the booth. And they were both around when Ron Polk was there. They walked over to the booth. Jim Ellis is actually going in the ring of honor tomorrow here in Starkville. One, two, strike three called on the outside corner. And that's the second strikeout for Cal Steven and quickly two outs here in the second. Yeah, you know, Steven has done a good job early, and Johnny Long behind the plate is helping him of establishing the outside part of the plate. And look at that great job receiving by Johnny Long. Jeff Head, the home plate umpire tonight. And Paul Tates will now bat. Left fielder for Georgia. Tate's batting 362 on the season. He's making his 16th start of the year tonight. Six hits and 19 at bats in league games. And now the count one and one. That pitch was actually caught more of the plate than the two before it that had been called strikes. The difference, though, is Long was looking for that one on the inside part. And Steven just missed his spot. And now two and one. I mean, that kind of speaks to it's not just where you throw it, but what sort of job, what sort of positioning your catcher is giving you behind the plate. Breaking ball foul back in the count two and two.
And the 2-2 pitch. And there's a strike three called, and that will end the inning. So Cal Steven gets Tate's looking for something other than the fastball. Back-to-back -back strikeouts to end the top of the second inning. And we go to the bottom of the second. Mississippi State and Georgia are scoreless. You're making it a subjective issue. Yes. It's up to each individual person. First pitch to Isaac down and outside. Now it's going to be chilly for everybody before this one's over. Isaac has had the great SEC play, batting 405 in league games, leading Mississippi State and hitting in Southeastern Conference games, has the most hits at 15. It's so impressive, too, because Isaac did not get off to a hot start at the plate as the season opened. In fact, Bulldogs actually took him out of the starting lineup for a couple of games, but Isaac responded very well. He's played a good defensive center field as well. Both teams had a single in the first inning. So just one hit apiece. And now three and one. It's going to be interesting to see how Georgia handles Jarvis Evans tonight because you're used to on the weekend having Goldstein in that Friday night role and then who you back end him with. Maracna has been the Sunday guy. Kind of wondered what Georgia would do. They listed TBA for the Sunday game, as did Mississippi State. And the fastball high and outside and a leadoff walk here in the second inning. Wanted to leave Leighton Finley in that Saturday spot. Big right-hander tomorrow going for Georgia. Well, TBA has gotten a lot of work here the past couple of years on Sundays. Lead off walk in the second, and now Bryce Chance will come to the plate. All right, we saw State run with Mershon in the first inning. Now Hyzak aboard. He's got five stolen bases. Hasn't been called. And Evans starts out slider to Bryce Chance. Chance overall batting 264, three home runs. Well, you only have two weekend series this weekend around the league that started last night. Arkansas beat Ole Miss and Fayetteville. LSU won at home over Vanderbilt last evening. Feels like every time you look around the league, you say this is a big series. But for LSU, this is a really important weekend. Could win a couple, they'd feel a lot better about themselves. The 0-2, ground ball up the middle and into center field. Isaac going to hit the bag at second, going to try to get the third. Here comes the throw, and it's not in time. And runners at the corners and nobody out after the single from Bryce Chance. Well, nice job by Bryce Chance, just taking that one right back up the middle. Base hit for him, and the Bulldogs of Mississippi State variety now with a little noise here in the home half of the second. Well, Isaac had the play in front of him and made his mind up. He was going to test the arm of Charlie Condon in center field. Now left on left, Logan Kohler, the third baseman for State, Makes a breaking ball down and away for ball one. Kohler batting 207, actually hitting it better in league play, batting 226 in league games. 
has six RBIs in SEC play. 1-0. This time comes in the front door with a breaking ball, and the count's even. That can be a really effective pitch for a left-hander when you're willing to drop one on the inside part of the plate. And he's seen a steady diet so far. You've got the right-handed hitting Johnny Long in the on-deck circle, then another lefty in Jackson McKenzie. Two-one. He comes with a fastball. Now the count three and one. Yeah, on the big miss that time. And that's going to send a catcher and a couple of arms down to the Georgia bullpen. Three and one. Runner goes from first. Then a fly ball lifted into the outfield. Left fielder ranging over. Condon, the center fielder, never saw it. And Tates comes in to make the play. And it'll be a sacrifice fly for Logan Kohler. That ball was more close to center field than it was left. And Condon had no idea where that ball was. Well, I lost the ball off the bat into the sky. And just watching Condon, it looked like he had a beat on it until you realize he doesn't know where this is. And so State takes a 1-0 lead on the sacrifice fly. Chance stays at first, and here's Long. And luckily for Georgia, that ball was somewhat of a lazy fly ball that Tates was able to race over to make the play. Westwood well, is a left fielder. You just keep waiting for your center fielder to call you off and call you off and call you off. And like, well, do you really want me to catch this thing? In there for a strike and a count of one. Well, this stadium and this setup can be very difficult on a visiting center fielder. This time of day, you get some funny glare off the roof of the stadium. Just wait to 1 o'clock on Sunday. Counts 0-2. The leadoff walk to Hyzak, and it comes back to bite Jarvis Evans. When you go back to the ability of Hyzak to take third, on that base hit up the middle by Bryce Chance. And if he wasn't digging, thinking third the entire way, he doesn't get there. Condon got the throw into the bag, and Isaac just beat it. So the 0-2 fastball up. Let's see back foot breaking ball here. Runner at first, one down. Well, he came inside and I bet they call a long out. He told him to stay there. Let's take a look. I was wondering if it hit the bat. So they're going to keep him here. And now they're going to look at two strikes. And so, and now the umpires are going to come together. I think Wes Johnson said, hey, now, he leaned into it. And if that ball was out of the box, a strike would be administered. And that would result in a strikeout. And he is out. And that's what they call him out now. So I'll have a discussion here, but 
Let's take a look. So I'll give you something else to ponder here, and that is that ball might have been a strike. In its own right, you get hit by a strike and you're clearly out. But just watching that. Yeah, just was, watching it at full speed when it first happened, that was going to be surprised if out was not going to be the outcome. And I think Chris Lamonis is going to ask him to review this, and this may not be a good use of a review. Mississippi. Mississippi State has challenged ruling on the field. Yeah, this is a part of Major League Baseball where the manager is actually looking into the dugout, <laughs> and you've got a video crew. you got a guy right in the hallway. you got a guy in the hallway saying, all right, we, yay or nay, do I need to review this or not? <laughs> Let's all hold up. Well, in fact, you'll see him. Major League Manager is just giving the wait sign to the umpire. Yeah, he leaned into that one with that left elbow. And this one's going to be quick. After Second base after umpire video, Derek Malika says the stop the music. The, confirmed. the bat is out. The music was still playing. Derek Malika says I'm not waiting on it anymore. And he says yes, it is confirmed he is out. So now two outs in the inning and a runner still at first and here's Jackson McKenzie. The stadium DJ a little more impressed by sorry Miss Jackson and was Derek Malika. I am going to let the chorus go. If it starts it has to end. So it goes in the book as a strikeout for Johnny Long, and that's the first strikeout of the night for Jarvis Evans. So Jackson McKenzie at the plate, making only his second start of the season. Two hits and eight at-bats. He had a single in the game on Tuesday. Runner going, and a steal without a throw. Well, Bulldogs have started two runners tonight, and Gonzalez has had trouble with a transfer both times behind the plate. And now a runner in scoring position with two outs. Wasn't a great pitch to throw on anyway. That base would have been stolen. So a left-hander on the mound, you might be asking why is State sending a left-hander to the plate in the DH role tonight, but two things. McKenzie had a big hit late in the ball game earlier this week in a pinch hit roll, but left-handers have overall had some success against Evans. In there for a strike, and it counts even. McKenzie, the freshman from Pace, Florida. And it takes a breaking ball down. And Charlie kind of goes back to the philosophy of Chris Lamontis that we have seen in his time here in Starkville. If you've come to the plate and you produce state was very lethargic at the plate in the game on Tuesday lost that game to Central Arkansas but McKenzie got a hit late in that game and so he's in the lineup again tonight hits that ground ball to third to the shortstop and that will end the inning. so McKenzie rolls out six to three on the put out Bulldogs get a run though in the bottom of the second we head to the third Mississippi State with a one nothing lead over Georgia and we move to the third. Fernando Gonzalez, the catcher. The senior from Panama. It'll be eight, nine, and one in the inning. That ball popped up right side. Will it stay in play by the bullpen and Hunter Hines, a little course knowledge there. Well, you're exactly right. This is a difficult play, getting down in the bullpen area. 
Wall juts out, just gets in behind it. Got a net to look over. Walls to contend with. Nice play by Hines. And now Sebastian Marillo will bat the second baseman. Well, first time through the order for Cal Stephen. He gave up a one out single to Charlie Condon in the first inning, retired the side in order in the second. Now the leadoff man retired in the third. Line drive into center field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit. Nice piece of hitting by Marillo, who's batting 3-11 on the season coming into tonight. And now Corey Collins will bat. So you flip the lineup over. And if you're Marillo, you know you're going to get a pitch to hit there. The last thing that Cal, Cal Steven wants to do is go deep into an at-bat or walk the nine-hole hitter with Collins and Condon. Make him hit his way aboard, but that's what Marillo does. Just takes one up the middle. And now the shift is on with Collins at the plate. Struck out looking back in the first. Grounds a foul over by the Georgia dugout. State with a run in the bottom of the second inning. Second base runner of the night for Georgia. Got a one-out single in the first and now a one-out single in the third. Marillo just one for one in stolen bases. This Georgia team does not run much at all. That's understandable, particularly at his spot in the lineup. Last thing he would do is erase a base runner in front of some power bats. Throw to first, runner back. And like we saw in the first inning, the shift is on. Pull to the right side against Corey Collins. Boy, he threw the fastball right in the heart of the plate on the 0-2 pitch. Got away with one there. Big lead for Marillo, able to get back to the bag. That's one of the things that's been interesting. Georgia doesn't run a lot, but they do take some aggressive leads at first. And another throw over. Lifted out of play. Well, when you look at these two teams, really did not play murderer's row at all in non-conference play. Mississippi State nor Georgia. And so both of these teams, Charlie, kind of trying to get some answers here early in SEC play. Georgia did play a three-game series. Actually just got two of them in against Georgia Tech in the third weekend of non-conference play. Built out a big record. Lost the first three games of league play at Kentucky. But then swept Alabama in week two. So to get back at three and three, then lost two out of three last weekend at Tennessee. The but Georgia Tech series was one where there was a game in Atlanta. One in Athens, then one Back at Cool Ray Park. 
We we'll try to elevate that time. See if you get the chase. Now the count one and two. That's why that first game of that Georgia Tech series, it was actually suspended due to rain in the middle of the fifth inning. Georgia had the lead, but they it wasn't the normal Friday rain delay where you can come back and pick it up the next day because you were headed to a different park. Lifted in the air, a long run for Mershon, foul territory, and the catch is made. Well, Bulldogs had the shift on against the left-handed hit. Charlie Condon, just one of those players, the ball just jumps off his bat. When you start thinking about Mississippi State with Dakota Jordan and Hunter Hines and exit velocities, Condon was somebody that has the ball really jump off his bat. Now the, quickly the count 0-2. Johnny Law on the catcher earning a couple of strike calls for his pitcher right there. Got one at the top of the zone and one on the outside edge. 0-2, runner at first. Grounded out to the left side, Amani Larry. Throw it across, it's close, he's out, and that will end the inning. So Bulldogs had the shift on, and Larry having to throw a little bit longer. And Amani Larry, first pitch swinging back in the first, and then popped the ball out to the first baseman. And there's a shot into left field and hit well. Could go and gone. A home run for Amani Larry, his third of the season. And Mississippi State has a 2 0 lead. Well, Amani Larry tried to ambush the fastball his first time at the plate, popped it up, jumps the first pitch this time, and drives it out of the yard. Monty Larry puts a charge in one to left field. Talk about getting your pitch and not missing it. Larry got what he was looking for. And the first home run in SEC play for Amani Larry. And here's David Mershon. Chris Lamona's asking, hey, was that a strike or a ball? And Jeff Head said, strike is called, or strike because the batter went around. Sean hit a ground ball to the left side his first time up, beat it out for an infield single. And dropped it in over the outside corner. And a strikeout looking for out number one of the third. This is a great pitch working ahead in the count, just catches the back door. And here's Dakota Jordan. One out, nobody on. Grounded out to the shortstop his first time up. Two nothing Mississippi State lead. A run in the second, and now a solo home run by Amani Larry in the third. A fastball strike called. And the count 0-2. That's a great pitch on the inside part of the plate. Working away, working away, and then bring the fastball inside.
And strike three called on the outside corner. Well, one thing we have seen today is Jeff Head is giving the pitchers about a ball off the plate on the outside part. He's done it both ways. And that one just on the outside edge. And now Hunter Hines will come to the plate. Hit a ground ball on the right side, his first time up. Hit it into the shift. Murillo had to make a nice play out in shallow right field to throw out Hunter Hines back in the first inning, and that saved a run because Mershon was at third. Well, Evans gave up the home run, but since then here in the inning, really had state hitters off balance. And drops a breaking ball in. Count one and one. Tried to run the fastball away that time, and now three and one to Hunter Hines. Only one walk issued by Evans so far. That one came back to bite him. A leadoff walk of the second inning to Isaac, who came around to score. Three one, and low ball four. And the inning stays alive for Connor Isaac. Georgia's had Zach Harris working down in the bullpen. The right-hander has been tossing. Just staying loose, not throwing with any sense of urgency. And there you see Zach Harris. Isaac walked his first time up, went first to third on a single by Bryce Chance, and then scored on a sacrifice fly by Logan Kohler back in the second. And that ball hit into center field, and Condon ranging over. He'll make the play, and that will do it in the third. He's given up two singles, a one-out single in the first to Charlie Condon, a one-out single to Center field by Sebastian Marillo in the third. And here's Slade Offer who had a fly out to center field his first time up. And quickly the count 0-2. Cal Steven has thrown a lot of strikes here tonight. First 44 pitches, 35 have been across the plate. Slate offered in his sophomore season last year, made 40 starts at third base for Mississippi State. Hit 248 with nine home runs. His freshman year hit 209. Made nine starts, appeared in 26 games as a freshman here in Starkville. 2 2. He fouled it off. The count remains 2 and 2. I think he's done. He's played a lot of second base this year. Working at both second and third. This late played for Jared Smith up at Bob Jones High School. Madison, Alabama.
Two and two the count. Came inside and did it hit him? Well, they asked the first base umpire, Ray Gregson, did he go around? And he said he did not. And a leadoff hit batsman here in the fourth. Let's take a look. It's a leadoff base runner here in the fourth. And Logan Jordan will come to the plate. Had a fly out to center field back in the first. State will play basically up the middle with the second baseman, Amani Larry. He is very near the second base bag. Pitch that time, couldn't get the call. And ground ball left side, Kohler up with it, throw to second for one, throw to first, and that is a double play. So the Bulldogs third baseman, Logan Kohler, starts the around the horn double play. And quickly two outs in the fourth. Tough ball to turn a double play on. First of all, you're playing a little bit out of sorts defensively, and then the ball not hit that hard. Larry has to make the good turn, throw there just in time at first base. But nice job by the third baseman, Kohler, getting that one started. And 16th double play ball this season by Mississippi State. And now two outs in the inning, and Trey Phelps will bat. He granted out to the shortstop to lead off the second. Hit a ball hard his first time up. Saw Steven pull through that one a little bit. When he's missed, it has been glove side and down for the most part. That ball inside the bag at third and down into the left field corner. And on his way to second is Trey Phelps. A stand up two out double. Six double of the season for Phelps. He got that one right inside the third base bag. Got a pitch over the inside part of the plate, hits it hard. Chance has to get over and dig it out. Or otherwise, Phelps may be at third. And here's Colby Branch, who struck out looking his first time up. Both teams now with three hits in the game. I see Steven again down and away. It fell behind Phelps 2-0, and, oh, and you kind of feel like that led to Phelps being able to sit up there dead red. Branch has eight home runs on the season, and there's a shot into center field. Hyzak ranging back, and he'll make the catch a couple of steps in front of the warning track, and that will end the inning. So Branch gives one a ride that's on three hits. Three strikeouts, two walks. And 56 pitches now, 35 strikes. He's gotten three ground outs, three fly outs. 
a couple of singles and a home run. Thought he did a really nice job last inning responding to that home run. So Monty Larry came up, drove a pitch out of the yard, but then Evans gets a pair of strikeouts looking before walking Hines and then getting the fly out from Isaac. Well, Bryce Chance had a single his first time up. Ground ball into center field. Allowed Heizak to go first to third. That was really the big hit of the inning. And that ball hit well into center field. And out to Charlie Condon. Well, the ball doesn't have a whole lot of carry here at the ballpark tonight. There have been a lot of balls go to die in center field tonight. Not a ton of carry. Wind is not blowing at all right now. It was blowing in from left field at about five miles an hour when the game started. But it's a cool night. It's in this ballgame, Georgia's got at least three flyouts to the track and center. Here's Kohler who drove in the first Bulldog run. With the sack fly, rolls that ball out to the second baseman. Marillo makes the short toss over. And two quick outs here in the fourth inning. They get to the bottom of the order, and obviously both of these teams, when you get to the bottom of the order, are thinking about trying to get hit, score runs. But as important as anything is be able to turn the lineup over. Get things back to the top of the order for each of these clubs as fast as they can. Jax McKenzie due up next. Johnny Long stuck his elbow out the first time up with two strikes. And hit off that elbow guard that caught him out on strikes. Goes to the book as a strikeout. Reviewed it. Said he did stick that elbow out there. And he did. He's going to go back and look at the film and say, you know what? Yeah, I probably did it. In hindsight, you got me. <laughs> you caught me. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Oh, count one nice two. pitch. The ball and two strikes to Johnny Long. And here's a 2-2. Two -two. There's strike three called on the outside corner, and that will end the inning. Fourth strikeout for Jarvis Evans. Out looking his first time up. Against Cal Steven. Steven threw four innings, has given up no runs on three hits, three strikeouts, no walks, five flyouts, three ground outs. He's gotten one double play ball. 58 pitches, 41 strikes. I think the stat you just gave that perhaps most important, the fact that he hasn't walked guys. This is a Georgia lineup that can put a charge in a baseball. Extra guys on base can make a big difference. You think back past couple of years for Mississippi State when they've struggled, it seemed like the home runs they were giving up always had a walk or two in front of them. Or a 2-0 pitch or a 3-1 pitch. One and two the count. The breaking ball foul back. 
Well, you make a good point. We tend to think so much about throwing strikes as being a situation of whether you walk a guy or not. But one of the big things is how often do you put your opponent in a hitter's count? Those two O pitches have a way of turning into home runs. Swing and a miss. Got the slider across the outside corner. And, Charlie, that's what you mentioned before the game started. The key to success tonight was going to be the slider from Cal Steven, and he's been able to locate that pitch. Well, the ability just to help keep guys off his fastball. Fastball set that pitch up. Only the fourth strikeout and the first strikeout since the second inning. And Fernando Gonzalez will bat. He popped out in the foul territory down by the bullpen. The first baseman, Hunter Hines, was able to run it down back in the third. And did not go around, says the first base umpire, Ray Gregson. Ray will have the plate in the game tomorrow. Derek Malika, the second base umpire, will be behind the plate on Sunday. Lined in the center field. That's a base hit. So Gonzalez... Gets the fourth hit for Georgia, and it's a one-out single here in the fifth. And Sebastian Marillo will come to the plate. He had a one-out single back of the third to almost the same exact spot of that single by Gonzalez. Nice job of hitting by Gonzalez. Just takes it back up the middle. And, Charlie, you talked about it a minute ago. The thing about Georgia, and with a long ball potential, they can make up some runs and score some runs in a hurry. It really puts you in a spot as a pitcher where you cannot relax at the bottom of the order. The 0-1. And knocked down by Johnny Long. And that's part of the reason here that Murillo becomes such a big at bat. Because if he could work his way aboard, you turn this thing to the top of the order at Collins and Condon, two of the better hitters in the league. And a ground ball headed to right field, and that's a base hit. Gonzalez going to go first to third and back-to-back -back singles for Georgia. Now Georgia threatening for the first time tonight. And it's the top of the order coming up. Well, and you can sort of see everyone in the home stand shift in their seat a little bit. Is now a really big spot for Georgia. One down, runners on the corners. And Collins and Condon due to hit. Bulldogs are going to put the shift on defensively. Bring Mershon around to the other side of second base. Collins struck out looking his first time up. And then with a the shift on his last time up, it'll pop up into foul territory. Mershon was the only guy to the left side. On that play, had to run a long way into foul territory to make a catch on that pop-up. At the corners, one out. And strike two call. What well, a dangerous moment here for Cal Steven. And you've got back-to-back -back hitters in Collins and Condon. Well, two of the top hitters in the country. Well, Stevens worked ahead. Now a pitcher's count. Let's see what he does on 0-2. Boy, oh, he just missed the inside corner. Well, just misses inside. That is a great 0-2 pitch, though.
That's one of those you try to run back across the inside corner, and it just didn't run back enough. Well, anytime you can get the crowd upset with an 0-2 pitch, it's a pretty good one. Put it right where he wanted it. As you say, the only thing he might have added was the ability to run it back across the plate, but that's a really good pitch. Knocked down by a long runner going to take second though and that will take away the threat of the double play. So Marillo goes into scoring position and now a base hit could tie the game. Counts now even two balls and two strikes shift is still on. Swing and a miss and a huge strikeout to get for Cal Steven. Second strikeout of the inning. Now take a look at this one. Right at the bottom of the zone. And now with first base open, surely you're not going to pitch to Condon and State will not. It'll be an intentional walk to Charlie Condon to load the bases with two outs and set up the matchup with the bases loaded in two outs and Slate offered coming to the plate. Offered a fly out to center field in the first. He was hit by a pitch to lead off the four. Little drama here in the top of the fifth. Two down, base is loaded. And pass long, who was crossed up, and a run will score, and it's two to one. Now Long did not get the pitch he was looking for here. Count now 2 and 0, oh, a run scores. And now the go ahead run in scoring position. It will be scored a pass ball. And Gonzalez is able to score. Two one. And lifted foul down the right field side and headed to the berm and now the count two and two. So a big moment in the ball game. A lot of baseball to be played though but we're in the top of the fifth inning a two one Mississippi State lead. And we'll do it again. Fastball just the outside part of the plate offered. Fins it off. Breaking ball swung on and missed. And that will end the inning. So Alford strikes out on the slider. A run scores for Georgia, though. Cut the lead in half. Middle of the fifth, 2-1 Mississippi State. Playing the Astros right now. Rangers and Astros. State now has 12 players on the 40-man rosters. 
which is the most in the SEC. Now, you've got some players that are injured. Kendall Graveman out for the season. Brandon Woodruff on the injured list. Nate Lowe has been injured here early in the season. But Jake also, Mangum's got to be asking, what do you got to do? <laughs> Jake and AAA with the Durham Bulls. Had an outstanding spring. The Rays organization. Quickly 0-2 to Jackson McKenzie, tonight's DH. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout, the lead off the fifth inning. Well, Jarvis Evans has gotten better as this thing has gone along. Well, Georgia to the bullpen, and Josh Robers. Massachusetts senior. Charlie, what you got on Robers? Well, Robers has been used often. This is a, his 11th appearance on the season. You see the ERA just under six. Better than a strikeout in inning, it keeps his walks down. Robers. No stranger to pitching in SEC play. They've used him every weekend. And here's Amani Larry, who homered his last time up. The Robers kind of a drop down three quarter. Starts him off with a slider. And brings that one in across the inside corner. Amani popped out in the first pitch he saw in the first inning to the first baseman. And then on the first pitch of the third, homer to left field. Hey, that boy's lit. Lit. So he's only seen five pitches tonight. Hit it off the handle, out to the shortstop branch. A toss across in time for the out. Six to three on the put out. And two quick outs in the bottom of the fifth inning. And Amani Larry grounds out, and David Mershon will bat. Well, he talks so much about how if you're Mississippi State, you want to face Condon with nobody aboard. If you're Georgia, you want to face Dakota Jordan leading off an inning, not with a guy aboard. And so this Mershon at bat certainly changed the pressure that's applied to Robers here in this inning. Mershon swinging from the left side for the first time tonight. One for two on the night, singled his first time up. Had an infield single in the hole to the shortstop. And then he struck out looking in the third inning against Jarvis Evans. Can close the book on Jarvis Evans. Could be the loser, could not be the winner, but pitched outstanding tonight. Four and a third, two runs on three hits. A strike call and the count two and one. Five strikeouts, two walks for Jarvis Evans. Well, and of those strikeouts, three of them were looking, and it speaks to his ability to use his secondary pitch. And without Charlie Goldstein in the lineup tonight as the starting pitcher, that is a huge win for Georgia to get the outing that they got from Evans to start this weekend. Retired seven of the last eight guys he faced. Ground ball over to Slate Offered at third. Flip it across and picked out nicely by the first baseman, Logan Jordan. And that will end the inning. So Bulldogs go in order in the fifth inning. We go to the sixth. Mississippi State with a two, five and six for Georgia here in the sixth inning.
2-1 Mississippi State lead. I think Stevens done. He's able to throw his breaking pitch for strikes. Now ahead 0-2. Breaking ball to third, Kohler up with it. Steps and throws and time the out. Leadoff man retired here in the sixth inning. Skoller fields his position, one down. Now get Phelps to the play, Trey Phelps. Had a double inside the bag at third back in the fourth inning. Ball hit very well down in the line. Actually got into the corner. Bryce Chance did a nice job for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State digging it out and preventing a triple. A strike called. Phelps granted out to the shortstop in the second inning. And hits that ball in the air into left field. Bryce Chance. Coming in, he'll make the catch for out number two of the sixth. Well, when you look at wins and losses this year for Mississippi State, 11 losses in the ledger right now, 19 wins and 11 losses. But out of the 11 losses, seven have been one-run losses. And conversely, only one win by one run. A strike called. I got two. Okay, I'll give you that. One was against New Orleans down in Biloxi. The other against Southern Miss in Pearl. Neither have been here at home. State does not have a one-run win at home this season. Hit it off the end of the bat. So it's been one of those seasons where State is 19 and 11, but have given up some hits late in games. Well, and still trying to sort things out at the back of the bullpen. Of course, if Nate Dome comes back, it gives you more options. Here's the 0-2. Missed down and away. Two outs, we're in the top of the sixth inning. Yeah, both these teams having to play tonight with the guy they like, would like to have seen out here on a Friday night. No discredit to the guys that went out there. They'd like to see them bounce back a day. Missed away, and now the count two and two. Breaking ball, grounded out to the second baseman of Monty Larry, who was pulled over to the left of the second base bag. As Colby Branch grounds out, Georgia goes in order in the sixth. Yeah, Dakota 0 for 2. Takes a strike at the knees and grounded out to the shortstop of the first. Struck out looking in the third. Strike two call. Georgia, one run on five hits. Mississippi State, two runs on three hits. State scored a run in the second. The leadoff walk came around to score, scored on the sack fly. Armani Larry, a solo home run to lead off the bottom of the third. Georgia got a run back in the top of the fifth. That's where we are, 2-1 here in game one of this three-game series.
to set up outside and miss the spot. Georgia's not used to these kind of games to open a league series. A lot of runs scored in a game one that they played this year. That's a good take that time by Jordan. Talking about state in one run games this year. Georgia has won one one run game. Of course, hadn't played many. Have by not, comparison. Have not lost it. And now three and two the count. Conversely, we just talked about State playing in nine one-run games that have won two and lost seven. Yes, Georgia just won in league play. Strike three called on the inside corner. And the leadoff man retired in the sixth inning. That's eight in a row retired by Georgia pitching. Robers got a couple of ground balls to get out of the fifth inning. And gets the strike out of Dakota Jordan to lead off the six. Four of the six strikeouts for Georgia pitching tonight have been looking. Ground ball outside the bag of first. They actually have four one-run wins. Yeah, just one in league play. Yeah. 6-5 win over Alabama. But otherwise, in fact, that series against Tennessee got the 16-2 win to start the weekend. One out, nobody on. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hunter Hines walked his last time up. Grounded out to the second baseman in the first. Now that one just inside to Hines. And now the count three and two. Swing and a miss at the breaking ball. And so Rober strikes out Jordan and Hines back to back to start the sixth. Well, it's a wicked pitch. See the late break and a big swing. And now two down. And Connor Hyzak will bat. He's 0 for 1. He walked and scored in the second. Yeah, when you look at Georgia this year, pitching-wise in league games, teams have been batting 344 against Georgia this season in the SEC. That's worst in the league. But tonight they've held Mississippi State to just three hits. You would not know it watching this game. Nope. Of course, Evans so good starting this one. After that home run by Amani Larry, you could see some fidgeting in the Georgia dugout. They were trying to make a decision about how hard to get someone ready in the bullpen.
but back-to-back -back strikeouts looking, then a fly out after a walk. And retires the side in order in the fourth. A great job staying in the game, giving Georgia a little more length. And now the count full. So that's the thing. You're not just trying to pitch this game. You're trying to figure out how to pitch a whole weekend. And the only base runner since that home run from Amani Larry was Hunter Hines with a walk in the third. State hasn't had a hit since that leadoff home run in the third. And still hasn't. Well, Rober strikes out the side. Jordan looking. Hines swing. And three of the hits he has allowed have been to the bottom three of the order. Paul Tates will lead off. Hits that ball well into center field. Hyzak on the run and well, overran it and had to reach down and make the catch for the first out of the inning. Now, this Fooling. ball was hit well. Hyzak, though, I think thought this ball was going to carry more than it did. You see Hyzak taking the angle, but the angle took him a little too deep and just makes that catch. And a leadoff man retired in the seventh inning, and here's Fernando Gonzalez, who scored Georgia's only run in the fifth inning. Got a one-out single back in the fifth. Georgia had back-to-back -back singles by Gonzalez, then Marillo. They got the top of the order to the plate with runners at the corners. And then Marillo went to second on the wild pitch. He had second, third, and one out. He got a big strike out of Collins. Walt Condon. And then was Slate offered at the plate, and the bases loaded. A pass ball allowed the run to score. And then offered struck out swinging to end the inning to strand the runners at second and third. The 1-1. One -one. All right, go back to that line out last at bat there by Tates. It sort of fits the profile. There's been a lot of balls hit to center field today that seemed off the bat that they would carry more than they did. You hit one out to center today, and you have ever more hit it. Just off the plate, and the count three and one. It popped up, foul territory, and that will get out of play. And now the count's full to Gonzalez. Murillo in the on-deck circle has two of Georgia's five hits. He's two for two. Swing and a miss. He threw him a slider on three and two. And Gonzalez strikes out. Strikeout number seven tonight for Cal Steven. And now two outs and Sebastian Marillo will bat. Marillo's been good tonight, couple of hits. Had a single in the third, singled again in the fifth. He drops a breaking ball in there. Marillo, a line drive single to center field in that third. Went the other way and grounded the ball through the right side and into right field in the fifth. This match is the longest outing. No, it does not. Seven innings is the longest outing. That was the first game for Cal Steven back in week one. He went six and two-thirds two weeks ago at Texas A&M.
his 100th pitch of the night. And it drops it in there for strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Top of the order to you up next, the 2-2. Way outside and now the count's full. State has a right-hander throwing down in the bullpen. That's Schulke. See that. Now the camera look. You see they've got a lefty working down there as well. Tyler Davis. And the 3-2. And low ball four. And the nine hole hitter Murillo draws the two out walk. And now the top of the order, Corey Collins, will come to the plate. So now, decision time for State. You've got Cal Steven on the mound. You see that pitch count now at 102. You've got a couple of guys who've been working down in the bullpen. And there you see Justin Parker having a conversation, and I would expect we're going to see a move to the pen here. And I say that because not just the pitch count. Corey Collins at the plate. 0 for 3 tonight, a couple of strikeouts against Cal Steven. Tyler Davis came back on Tuesday through an inning against Central Arkansas and worked a clean slate. He had the tough outing last week on the road at Florida in the Friday game. Walked a couple of batters. And in fact, he walked those hitters on nine pitches. And so important for him to find the zone early here tonight. Shift is on. Did not go around. And the third base umpire, David Yule, pointing at Chris Lamonis, telling him to get back in the dugout. And a count now two and one. And now three and one. Let's take a look back at that pitch. And that one one. Ooh. 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 Well, the big difference there is one and two or two and one. And now it's three and one. And that's ball four. And so a walk is issued. And now the tie run in scoring position, the go-ahead run at first, and Charlie Condon coming to the plate. Back-to-back two-out walks. I wonder if we don't see at least a visit to the mound and maybe a pitching change here. Got Schulke out there, the right-hander. And the right-handed hitting Charlie Condon. So you've got the right-handed. Submarine, three-quarter. He'll come over the top. And Charlie Condon coming to the plate. One for two tonight, a single in the first inning, a ground out in the third. He was intensely walked in the fifth. It hits a ball right off the end of the bat and back to Schalke, and that will end the inning. Boy, what a big pitch by Schalke. Hold on to a lead that stands at two to one. It'll be six, seven, and eight chance, Kohler and Long, to hit here in the seventh. 
And Rover's back out to work for Georgia. He's retired five in a row since coming into the game. Chance. Three of them by strikeout. Yeah, struck out the side in the sixth. Chance with a single in the second, a fly out to center field in the fourth, for 1 0. That's what you've seen from Rovers all night, that tight, late breaking pitch. Shows you that lower arm slot. And it runs that one back across the outside corner in the count one and two. There's a fly ball hit deep in the left. Ranging back is Tates, and that ball is just dying out in the outfield tonight. And we've seen it all night long in center field. That ball is hit well off the bat of chance, and zero carry tonight at this ballpark. So many times when we see balls hit to the outfield here at this ballpark that don't carry, we're talking about the wind being the factor, wind not blowing at all, but right now, anything in the air to left and center just hanging up. And here's Logan Kohler. 0 for 1 officially, had a sacrifice fly back in the second inning, driving in the first Mississippi State run. And then Amani Larry had a solo home run in the third to lead off the third, and that's the last hit for State. Georgia has out hit Mississippi State five to three. Did not have that on the card coming in tonight. Just eight hits between the two teams. Bunted right through it. Georgia had the shift on and had Offord on the left side of the infield playing back deep. Offord basically playing in a shortstop position. And now two and two the count. One down, bottom of the seven. And strike three is called as that one nips the outside corner. So says Jeff Head. Now pitch right on the edge, and Jeff Head's been giving the, doing about a ball off the plate either way here tonight. And now Johnny Long will come to the plate. He's 0 for 2 with a couple strikeouts. Nine strikeouts for Georgia pitching tonight. Six of the nine have been looking. And hit it the other way and lines it right to Logan Jordan. And the Bulldogs go in order. Tight with a night in game one. Laid off at 0 for 2. Fly out to center field in the first. He was hit by a pitch to lead off the fourth. And then he struck out swinging with second and third and two outs in the fifth inning to end that fifth inning. Schulke came in the game through one pitch to get out of the top of the seventh.
And strike two is called. Is a nice pitch. And that's been called a strike tonight. Multiple times, both ways. Mm. And now Shulky trying to get the fourth strike of the at bat. See what he does. And he does. Offered strikes out swinging to lead off the eighth. That's a really nice job by Shulky. Thought he should have gotten the call the pitch before. Comes back. Puts one in the zone. Gets the strikeout. And now Logan Jordan will bat. Boy, we got a pinch hitter. It's going to be Dylan Goldstein. Batting 338 on the season. No surprise for anyone for Georgia, but Goldstein can put a charge in one. You see those nine home runs. Nine home runs and 77 at bats on the season. In fact, 17 of his 26 hits have been for extra bases. Left-handed hitters batting 360 against Cam Schulke this season. Conversely, Schulke has been outstanding against right-handed hitters. They're only batting 176 coming into tonight. But the lefties have given him just a little bit of trouble. 2-2. Two -two. And grounded foul. And we'll do it again. Good Goldstein on the air has more extra base hits than he has strikeouts. Guy will put it in play. And grounded. Hunter Hines, the underhand toss. And two outs here in the eighth. So Hines stays down on the ground ball to first base, makes the nice toss. Schulke, who was covering. And now we'll have another pinch hitter. Is Dylan Carter will bat. Transfer from Texas Tech. Another left-handed hitter. Carter batting 185. 10 hits and 54 bats, but five of his 10 hits have been home runs. So Carter has not hit righties well. Schulke has not faced lefties well. Have it. Time out from the dugout. Talk things over here. Yeah, Will Coggin, who Mississippi native, Mississippi State alum. And Coggy, the uh, assistant head coach. His first season over with Wes Johnson in Georgia. Of course, those two worked together in the 2016 season here. The old Coggins been up with Nick Mingione at Kentucky. And breaking ball strike call to count 0-2. Well, you like the change right there because you have the conference. And obviously, Bill Coggins talking a lot about that drop down and then Schulke coming over the top with one. Here's the 0-2.
Well, I thought that was strike three, too. Well, the computer is like going to like that pitch a little bit more than Jeff Head. Jeff Head has given some below the zone tonight. That one not. That one's outside to count two and two. He's had, it's almost like he's had a bigger zone with certain pitchers. Sometimes pitches are easy to see from different pitchers. Here's a 2-2, two -two, way outside. So Georgia right here obviously would love to have Carter run into one. At the same time, you want to keep turning the order over, give the big sticks a chance to hit in the ninth. Swing and a miss. Well, Shulky had to short. He struck out swinging in the fifth. He was the first batter, excuse me, the last batter that Evans faced. He got that first out of the fifth. Does Mississippi State go back to Schulke? In the top of the ninth. They got six, seven, and eight due up for Georgia. And pitch outside, and it counts two and one. New right fielder is Goldstein. Carter stays in the ball game in center. Condon moves over to first. And to the right side. A nice flip by the second baseman, Marillo. So a new outfield right now. You've got Chadwick in left, Carter in center, and Goldstein in right. And as you said, Charlie, Condon moves from center field over to first base. McKenzie rolls out four to three on the put out. Leadoff man retired in the eighth inning, and here's Amani Larry. State only has three hits in the game tonight. Larry had a solo home run to left field on the first pitch of the bottom of the third. And other than a two out walk to Hunter Hines later in that third inning, that has been the last base runner for State tonight. 14 in a row retired by Georgia pitching. State had a hit each in the first three frames, but since then, this home crowd has not had a lot to get excited about, at least offensively. I'm not sure this is what we expected when we got here tonight, but this has been a Friday night SEC game. Well, it really has. Complete shock right now. You've got two teams in the top half of the league and hitting. Georgia has really struggled on the mound in SEC play. But Georgia has looked outstanding tonight. It all started with Evans, then Ropers was fantastic. And now Harris gets the first out of the bottom of the eighth inning. And just outside. And now the count three and two. You mentioned Chadwick out in left field. He'll... He's due up second in the top of the ninth. And the 3 2. Swing and a miss. And a strikeout for Harris and out number two of the eighth. It's a really good job locating the fastball on the inside part of the plate. A little arm side run to it. And now two down, nobody aboard. David Mershon, the Bulldog shortstop, will hit. 
Mershon, one for three tonight, had an infield single in the first inning. Struck out looking in the third, then grounded out to the third baseman offered to end the fifth. And lay down a bunt. Harris fields, throws, and not in time. That's a bunt single. Laid down nicely by Mershon, and that is the first base runner in about an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> Really nice bunt, kills it out in front of the plate, and a good job getting down to the line by Mershon. And we're going to have a mound visit. And not just a mound visit, we're going to have a huddle. Calling every. <laughs> that was a jog, Bertman, anything but back in the day. Here's Dakota Jordan. Runner at first. And two outs. And he hit him. Came inside with a fastball and it hits Dakota. Yeah, that was 94 into the back. Now, Dakota obviously not that happy about it, but look, you're going to see guys miss arm side with a fastball, and that's what happened. This gets away from Harris, and now, though, as Jordan heads to first, Rashawn moves over to second. And here's a guy who could put a charge into one. Both these teams have some power guys. Hines won for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. And now the catcher, Gonzalez, is going to go out. Good use of a trip to the mound right here. Slow the game down a little bit. The crowd had gotten into it. After Dakota Jordan hit by the pitch, a couple of guys aboard. You got the power hitter up. And if you're Harris, after letting one get away from the arm side, the last thing you want to do is groove a fastball to this guy. Hines 0 for 2, a ground out and a strike out. He walked to the third. And try to run it away. Mershon at second, Jordan at first. Both runners coming with two outs, the 1 0. Two one Mississippi State lead. A combined nine hits tonight. Georgia has one run on five hits. State has two runs on four hits. Pull the string again, and now the count two and two. That pitch looks so good coming up there, but just way out in front was Hines. Now a spot for Hunter Hines where he needs to simplify, and a spot for Harris where he'd love to locate a pitch.
Ground ball poked to left field. And that will drive in a run. Hunter Hines goes the other way. An RBI single to left field, and State has a two-run lead. That might be one of the most impressive singles that Hunter Hines has had all season long. He's got a big opening to the left side. Everybody's expecting him to go dead pull. He takes the pitch just off the outside part of the plate, drives it the other way. The shift opened up a hole. Going to hit batsman to Dakota Jordan, comes back to bite. That put Mashon in scoring position. Here's Isaac. Struck out his last time up, takes a pitch on the outside corner. An insurance run for the Bulldogs, the Mississippi State Bulldogs here in the bottom of the eighth. Isaac walked and scored back in the second. And now Harris way out in front, 0-2. Swing and a miss. Oh, he fouled it. Got just a piece of it. And the catcher, Gonzalez, almost squeezed it. see a big miss that time. That pitch way inside. One and two, runners at first and second, two outs in the bottom of the eighth. That ball hit well in the left field, back and gone! A three-run home run for Connor Heizag. And State breaks it open. On a night where the ball isn't traveling, Heizag just hit that one 400 feet. And that changes things. Got the slider that hung, and he knew it. A one-two pitch. Everything coming with two outs. 15 in a row had been retired, and David Mershon lays down a butt that he couldn't have rolled out there any better. And that changed everything. Well, look at the... State dugout, everyone congratulating Hunter Hines, talking to him about the big hit he had going the other way. Four runs home here in the bottom of the eighth, taking a 2-1 lead to 6-1. And here's Bryce Chance. Chance hit a ball to deep left field his last time up. Connor Heizak with his fifth home run of the season. And three of the five have come in SEC play. A swing and a miss. And that will end the inning. But Mississippi State with an RBI single. 
And Colby Branch will lead off. It'll be six, seven, and eight in the order. Colby Branch, 0 for 3 night. Strike out, a fly out, and a ground out. Chadwick do up next. Well, Schulke came in and got the final out of the seventh inning. Came in with runners at first and second and two outs and got Charlie Condon to ground the ball right off the end of the bat back to it. Worked a perfect one, two, three, eighth inning, struck out a pair. And now two and one to Colby Branch. Pretty short leash here in the ninth. Bulldogs. We have somebody throwing down in the home bullpen. And now 3-1. Stevens and Harden down there tossing. And way outside and a leadoff walk in the ninth. Well, after losing Branch, I would be willing to bet that Stevens and Harden will graduate from tossing to throwing. And now Clayton Chadwick will bat for the first time tonight. Chadwick batting 284 on the season. Three home runs. Checked in the ball game in the left field. First turn to the plate. Paul Tates has started the game out in left field. He went 0 for 3 tonight, a couple strikeouts and fly out. And then strike two. Try to flip the Frisbee up there, and that one stayed outside. And reached down and golfed that one out in the left center field. Chance ranging over, and he'll make the catch. Bryce Chance puts it away. Chadwick flies out for out number one of the ninth. Isaac got all the way over there. Chance said, relax, I got it. And here's Fernando Gonzalez, the catcher. One for three tonight. Had a single to center field back in the fifth inning. He scored Georgia's only run tonight. When you look back to that fifth inning, Georgia had the chance. And back-to-back one-out singles by Gonzalez and Marillo. But a big strikeout. Cal Stevens got Collins. They walk Condon to load the bases for Slate Alford. And then a pass ball. Johnny Long and the pitcher Cal Stevens got crossed up on a pitch. Pass ball scored the lone run for Georgia. And then Slate Alford struck out with runners at second and third and two outs. The 0-2. Ground ball the right side. Could it be two? To second for one. The throw to first and put this one in the book as a Mississippi State win. 4-6-3 double play.
Only boy watch out us. Yo, listen up, let me take you on a journey where dreams are born and souls burn with fury in the depths of our hearts. We hold our desires, but to make them real, we must light the fires. In the face of adversity, we stand tall with courage in our hearts. We'll conquer all through the trials and tribulations. We'll endure for our dreams, we'll fight all that we're sure. Fight for your dreams, let the music play In the rhythm of life, find your own way With every beat of your heart and every step you take Keep fighting for your dreams, don't let them break From the city streets to the starry skies We'll reach for the heavens with determined eyes With perseverance as our weapon and passion as our guide We'll break through barriers, let our dreams collide In the silence of the night, hear the roar of warriors fighting for dreams forevermore For in the battle for our dreams We find our strength in the symphony of life Let's go to any length Fight for your dreams, let the music play In the rhythm of life, find your own way With every beat of your heart and every step you take Keep fighting for your dreams, don't let them break So let the music guide you through the storm As you fight for your dreams in every form For in the melody of life, you'll find your truth And in the battle for your dreams, you'll find your youth Yeah, keep fighting for your dreams with all your might In the dance of life, let your spirit take flight For in the end, it's not about the fame But the journey itself and the fire in your flame